So welcome to this tropical chaos update. That's what I'm going to call it because we have three hurricanes. We have two category hur four hurricanes. That's right, two category four hurricanes uh, that are literally not very far apart from each other. So the first and foremost, we got to look at Irma. So Irma is a category four hurricane force. The ma maximum steam winds 155 miles an hour, and Minimum central pressure 924. So it's weakened a little bit. Its movement is west at 10 knots or 12 miles an hour. Let's take a look at the Irma forecast now. And you can see here that it has Florida directly in its crosshairs. And unfortunately, it looks like it's going to take the worst possible track right up the middle of Florida, even if it's along the Gulf Coast. This is a large storm. This is much larger than Andrew. And I'm going to show you a comparison between this and Andrew a little bit later. All right. Um, but this... This storm is absolutely uh, just insane, insane kind of storm. This track is insane. Uh, this is something that's very, very unusual. And so it's going to make landfall sometime early Sunday morning in the Florida Keys, and then it's going to make its way up, and uh, probably the worst of it sometime Sunday afternoon or, or you know late Sunday morning is going to be over Miami. And these areas here in South Florida, it's so bad. They're evacuating everybody, and there's a mass exodus of people coming out uh, like we've never seen before. Um, this is the kind of population movement we are going to see and start witnessing more of due to climate change. All right, so keep that in mind. So next, we're going to look at the satellite, uh, current satellite view. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Oh, there isn't just Irma. What am, what am I doing? There isn't just Irma. How could we forget about Jose? Jose is also Category 4. We have two hur hurricanes that are Category 4. You'd think that Irma would have cooled down the water column enough so we wouldn't have a Category 4 forming right behind it, but because of climate change, the water, the, the water temperatures further down in the ocean are also warming. So, therefore, you don't have that effect anymore because of climate change. So, this is a Category 4. It's wind, maximum stain winds, 150 miles an hour. This is a very bad hurricane. 938 millibars, minimum central pressure. It's movement it's west-northwest at 17 miles an hour. Let's take a look at Jose. All right? And Jose is going to affect some of the same islands that were hit by Irma. How tragic is that? Uh, and some of these people, they may not even know, because literally everything has been destroyed. Uh, and this is going to mean a major hurricane, major hurricane. And then it's going to wind up meandering in the Atlantic, and we're going to have to watch what it's going to do. All right, because I wouldn't I wouldn't write off and say oh, it's definitely going out to sea. I wouldn't say that. We got to keep our eye on it. All right, so it's moving at west northwest at 17 miles an hour. So yeah, we have Hurricane Jose too. I'm not going to talk about Katia because Katia right now is not affecting. Well, it is going to affect Mexico, but I can't cover every single hurricane. We have to talk about the two most major ones, uh, and th this is just an uh, unbelievable type of uh, weather history that we are witnessing here. So now let's go ahead and look at the satellite image. So let's take a look at the satellite image of Hurricane Irma. And I have to say, this is something a little unexpected. Um, you can see, first of all, its tilt, its structure looks great. But look at where it's moving. Um, originally, it was supposed to turn a little more west-northwest and start going toward Florida. But it looks like it's going right for Cuba still. So it looks like if this center goes over Cuba, it, it could weaken substantially. I mean... It'll still be a hurricane, but it won't be a Category 4 hurricane. It might weaken to a 2 or 3 if it goes over Cuba. So, yeah, it's, if it's not turning, it's continuing its westward move here. We were expecting a turn. I was, you know, looking at the models uh, that it was going to turn more toward Florida. So, maybe if this thing could stay on this track here and not turn until here and then turn this way, the worst of the storm may go along the Gulf Coast, and it may be significantly weaker. So let's let's see here. We're not, you know, uh, it, it's something, we may have some divine intervention to save Florida here. I don't know. Um, but let's go ahead and look at Jose now. And this is Jose. I'm telling you, this thing... <laughs> This is just, it's a smaller storm. You can tell it's much smaller than Irma. Uh, but it's its its just a, it's a Category 4. It's very intense. Uh, you can see it really still looks good. It's just smaller. 
but it's still got that buzzsaw look to it, as uh, Joe Chaffee, he called it a buzzsaw look to it, but yeah, it's got that buzzsaw look, and uh, I'll tell you, it's doing everything like a buzzsaw to these, these air, any area it comes, it hits, is unbelievable, but I mean, look at the, uh, just form of this thing, I mean, have to, having two strong hurricanes so close together, uh, I don't think I've ever seen it, this truly is weather history, Irma already broke weather history for maintaining its Category 5 status, the longest of any hurricane. Uh, and now uh, we have to look at Jose, uh, and it looks like Jose is going to affect some of these islands. So unfortunately, some of the very islands, oh, Barbuda, Barbuda is going to get hit again. Uh, and I hope the people there know that they're going to get hit again. And, you know, whatever Irma didn't take care of, Jose is going to finish off, and that island is going to be completely leveled. It was already completely leveled, but it's going to be literally uninhabitable and probably uninhabitable, many of these islands are going to be uninhabitable for many years and the people that live there. It's going to be very similar to what happened after Montserrat, uh, in Montserrat when uh, uh, that Soufriere Hills volcano erupted and that island had to be abandoned. I think the same thing is going to have to happen due to these natural disasters as well. Uh, anyway, I know, it's sickening to look at. Anyway, let's go ahead and look at the models. Oh, right. Or, uh, before I forget, that's right. Before I forget, let's show you a comparison to Irma and... So here you go. Here's a quick comparison of Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Andrew together. Obviously, this is not real. This is just superimposed. Uh, <laughs> but uh, this is Hurricane Andrew. First of all, Hurricane Andrew moved very quickly from, from east to west. All right? Uh, and look at how much smaller it is. Look at how much smaller an area it is. Look at how much larger Irma is. And that's another thing we're seeing now, is that these hurricanes are tending to be larger in area, not just in strength. So, obviously, when Andrew hit, the strongest part just hit maybe this area. But Irma is literally going to, uh, all of Florida is going to be affected by the hurricane force winds from coast to coast. They're going to be dealing with this. Uh, and this is going to be a, a just a catastrophe that Florida, I don't think, has ever seen. So now, let's take a look and see what the models have in store for us. And let me tell you, it makes you sick when you look at this stuff. It really does. Before we get to the models, I just want to briefly go over the spaghetti plot. And you can see it's taking it on this track. It's, it's going further west, though. And this track is a little not so much up the spine now. It's a little more along the Gulf Coast. That may mean, maybe, just maybe, Miami might escape, like, Category 5 conditions. May have to deal with Category 4 conditions. But if it's Category 3 conditions, which is bad, it won't be extremely catastrophic. But, you know, they are trending west. It would be, you know, I mean, it would be nice if this thing would just miss Florida. But then it's got to hit somewhere, and then it'll hit the panhandle. Uh, but uh, at least it would be out over, over the water longer. But anyway, let's go ahead and look at the GFS. So, here we go with the GFS, and uh, this is the 18Z run, and let's see what it does with Irma. Oh, it's trending west, all right. You can see, it definitely takes it over, and it, it, it definitely, but what happens is it gets, it gets, it loses a little strength over Cuba, but here's the thing, the water is very warm, so once it gets out over the ocean again, it's going to strengthen rapidly according to the GFS, and the GFS so far, unfortunately, has been very accurate when it comes to the strength of this storm. Because the euro underestimated it, and so what it hap happens is it then it, and then it has a curve. So it looks like oh, it may be a little miss Florida, but then it's going to get picked up by this little trough here. And uh, you can see we're going to have beautiful weather. We're going to have great weather, while other people are really we're very lucky. Uh, but uh, it, this thing is going to get deeper and deeper, and then it's going to literally go right up the middle, according to GFS. Maybe a little bit. You know, more to the Gulf, but this storm is so big, it's not going to matter. Coast to coast, you're going to have Category 4 conditions at least, maybe Category 5. And it, literally, it won't start weakening until it gets further up into Florida. And look, it still has it pretty, so oh my God, it still isn't intense as it goes over Georgia. Right over Atlanta. Uh, and then it kind of just dies out right there. Uh, and then let's look and see what it's going to do with Jose. Uh, Jose kind of meanders out there a little bit, but it looks like it's stalled out just to the east, and then event, it has it missing us, but I'm telling you, that's way in advance. Uh, we, we know our models are way in advance. We saw how they changed when it ha came to handling Irma. So, uh, yeah, this this would be a just horrible, horrible disaster. It's 
really sickening to look at this model uh, for the people in Florida and my friend, I have friends there, and it's just this is going to be so much worse than Harvey. I have to say it's going to be even worse. And we got to look at the URO next. I'm just looking at these two models here. We'll look at the URO and see what the URO does. Uh, well, maybe I'll look at some of the other models. Let's see what the URO. URO takes it further. URO has a very similar track. So you can see they're converging on this track here. And remember, it's a, she's a big storm. So all of Florida, from the Keys all the way up, are, are, is going to be raked by this hurricane. Uh, Florida is, is going to be, uh, it may wind up being uninhabitable after this. And we're going to have a lot of people from Florida looking to move other places. And this is what's going on with these storms. We're going to have climate refugees, mass movement of people. Um, and it's just going to put a strain on, on other areas. And let's see what it's doing with Jose. Yeah, it takes it awfully close to us. So we have to keep an eye on Jose as well. I'm not going to write Jose off yet, that's for sure. Uh, we'll look at the Canadian next. Let me just uh, put it back to precip moisture here. All right, let's see what the Canadian does. Oh boy, yeah, this is bad. They're all converging on this track for Florida, and this is this is the worst case scenario. Um, but none of them really track it over. Well, yeah, I mean they are tracking it over Cuba. Um, but the thing is, like I said, the e the western part of Cuba is kind of flat. It's the western part of Cu Cuba is like Florida. It's flat, and there's a lot of moist areas, so this thing ain't going to weaken that much. Uh, oh, boy, I tell you, this is just not good. Not good at all. Not good at all. And there's another storm. Looks like over here, let's form This is the Canadian. Oh, it'll spin up anything. Well, it's... So let me take you once again to the Heart National Hurricane Center. Um, and, um, we'll look at, uh, well, actually, what, let me just look at one other model here. Do some, we're actually in the range for the NAM, so, yeah, we have one more model we can look at. Let's see what the NAM's doing with us. All right, this one isn't in yet, it's the 12D. I'll leave you with this model, all right? So, let's see what the NAM is doing with us. Oh, man, they're all agreeing on this track. This track is going to be devastating. Ugh. Let's pray for Florida, folks. I'll keep you updated. But if you're in Florida, I hope you really just leave leave the state. Don't even stay there. Um, Florida is going to be just devastated if the, all this verifies. And we're going to have lots and lots of people having to relocate to other parts of the country after this disaster. So let's just pray here. We are in difficult times. Pray for humanity. But it does really feel like we are. Like Humpty Dumpty Tribe said, and I'll just say it this one last sentence, but it sure does seem like we are so fucked.